Hello everyone, Astral Chemistry here. Welcome back to the lab. Today we are going to show you how you can extract and purify trioxane from these packages that contain mostly trioxane and some other ingredients and that are used as fire starters or to heat meals. These combustible bars made of trioxane are mostly used by the army and also by outdoors men. They are very cheap and they usually contain a high amount of trioxane. So if you have seen our last videos in which we talked about separation problems, you know that the first step would be to look up what the contaminants would be in this fuel bar. So here you can see the national stock number and under the number and also under the specification sheet you can just look up the components. So for this fuel bar we have found that it contains more than 89% of trioxane, a few 1% or so of magnesium stearate which is just a fatty acid and some methylene blue to give it that bluish color that you can see right here. So before we get started let us take a look at trioxane itself. I have drawn the structure right here. As you can see it is a heterocycle with oxygen atoms at the 1, 3 and 5 position in a cyclohexane ring. If you take a close look at the structure, you can see that trioxane is nothing more than a cyclic trimer of formaldehyde. So this is the structure of formaldehyde right there. And this is also an acetal. So in general, an acetal is a compound like this where you have two oxygen atoms bond to one carbon and where the oxygen atoms usually bear some alkyl group. Most of the times our prime prime and our prime 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 would be the same substituent or most of the time you would actually have a cyclic acetal because they are more stable so you could just in this case have a ketone or aldehyde add some ethylene glycol and under acidic catalysis you would make a cyclic acetal and acetals are most often used as protecting groups for example, let's pretend you want to make a Grignard reaction and usually a Grignard reagent would react at the carbonyl right here since the carbon is electron deficient but if you protect it as an acetal this is no longer a reactive position under the Grignard conditions so you can for example just do a reaction in a different part of the molecule Now we have already gone ahead and added the trioxane from the fuel bar to this flask. Again, as you can see, it has a slightly bluish, bluish to violet color. Now, if you want to separate the pure trioxane, you have several approaches that you could take. So we have decided to 
do it by simple distillation. So the boiling point of trioxane would be 115 degrees centigrade and its melting point would be 62 degrees centigrade. So it is not really a normal distillation, but it is very easy to separate trioxane from methylene blue and magnesium stearate in this way, since both compounds are salts and non-volatile. So because trioxane melts only at 62 degrees centigrade, we have set up a slightly different apparatus than normal. So we have our regular flask right here with a stir bar. And then we have simply gone ahead and used this distillation bridge as a condenser. So there's no Liebig condenser or similar condenser, so this will only be air cooled. And you also have to get a heat gun ready since the trioxane will initially solidify in this tube. So you have to use a heat gun and melt it down so that it can drip down into this flask, which is also cooled in a water bath. Now if you don't have a setup like this, you can also just take this flask right here and simply attach directly a Liebig condenser to it. You can then heat this flask and the trioxane would evaporate and be deposited on the inside of the Liebig condenser. After that you can simply scrape it all out or melt it out. So you could collect the trioxane in that way. We have decided to do this in this way since it is the more proper way to do it and since we don't have time to clean the Liebig condenser or to scrape it out that would be just boring. So just a few words about trioxane why do you would want it so trioxane is a very useful compound if you want to make for example phenol formaldehyde resins where you take very reactive phenols and trioxane is just a less reactive form of formaldehyde. Also there, there are a lot of reactions where you have to take anhydrous formaldehyde basically so you can easily dry and purify trioxane instead of using the regular formaldehyde solution which is of course not possible to dry or it is very difficult to purify. So let's get started and let's see how we get on. Now let's raise the oil bath. So here's just another close-up of the trioxane in the flask. Thank you. 
so you can see how the trioxane is nicely depositing in the distillation bridge <laughs> and I find it so super satisfying that I'm really hesitant to use the heat gun to melt it down because these crystals look just gorgeous so excuse me if I include like 10 minutes of footage just from these crystals because they are so nice now of course you want to avoid blocking the entire tube since the apparatus could blow apart so just as a note for the new ones out there but since this tube is pretty large in diameter I don't see any risk of that happening anytime soon but of course if you get excessive crystal buildup in the tube you have to act and use the heat gun to just melt it down and also a note for the new ones um, anytime you do a distillation where you expect the compound to solidify in the condenser or also in the path up there you have to be extremely careful to avoid blockage especially if you insulate with aluminum foil and you can't see what's under there so be extremely careful when dealing with compounds like this so for example acetamide phenol are typical examples where you would do a distillation like this so in the beginning it is advisable to just remove the aluminum foil every now and then and just to check if the path is free now one, one, once the distillation is going you can of course see that new vapor is condensing there so you know that the path is not blocked I mean this is so gorgeous really the, the camera is not picking it up that well so I've made a few photos but <laughs> I could sit here and watch this all day so like honestly this is so nice I mean that's the nice thing about chemistry you know it is very hard sometimes and you know doing the paperwork and writing the mechanism and having the exercises and things like that but you know it always motivates me when I see gorgeous things like this and of course when you get nice crystals like this it is also an indication of the purity so <laughs> most of the times the larger the crystals the more pure the compound so the volume is nicely decreasing in the distillation flask right there so currently we did this in a 100 ml flask which is a bit large for this so we could have taken a 50 ml flask but I was unsure about the foaming so I could imagine that this would foam a lot but it is very nice nicely behaved so the next time we could use a 50 ml flask or the 100 ml flask and then use two of the heating bars right here so this is just so nice
So as you can see, the volume in the flask has decreased quite a lot and also the grip rate in the receiving flask has slowed down to a minimum. At this point you can turn down the heat and let the apparatus cool down. In general you would never distill to dryness since you could drive off some higher boiling impurities. In this case there is nothing, nothing really there that would come over at higher temperatures. So this is the residue in the boiling flask. So I wouldn't worry too much about the residual trioxane in this flask, since you can just add another batch of trioxane to this flask and distill it out of the exact flask. Now the only thing left is to melt any residual trioxane out of the condenser, which I have already done, and let the apparatus cool down. So here's our final yield of trioxane in the form of beautiful long needles. The distillation process seems to work very well and the only thing you have to do is to babysit it a little bit, so this is not the typical distillation that you can just run on autopilot. So you just have to sit there and occasionally knock it down with the heat gun. But apart from that the process seems to work very well. And as you can see <coughs> we have obtained a perfectly pure trioxane. And here's the residue in the boiling flask after it has cooled down to room temperature. Again, we're just going to add another batch to this and distill some more out of this. So hopefully you enjoyed our video and hopefully you, you forgive us that we have included so much footage about the distillation process. We really think that the crystals looked so nice that it was worthwhile including them in the video. I hope you also liked the photos that we took that hopefully show the crystals a bit more. We would also like to ask you to support us on Patreon. So you have probably heard about this, we announced it in a few videos already. It would be really great. You can find the link in the description below. So stay tuned for some more 
practical chemistry.